to really get a comprehensive understanding of where how these lithium ion batteries are done we really have to go back to the basics this is a slide from uh, one of the presentation given by kurt kelty kurt kelty was a phenomenal man he was one of the pillars key pillars who led the development of gigafactory and the mer you know, marriage between panasonic and tesla so he made this presentation and they actually have really deep ties to mining industry the metal me, me, metal processing industry metallurgical industry the logistics between all of those teams so they have a phenomenal connection there and they actually confirm and secure the supply for many years in advance so to lock in the price because the prices of some of these raw materials are you know vulnerable to market situations so they work very closely there so starting from the mining what we see here you know the raw materials nickel cobalt aluminum iron uh, iron is not used in the in the tesla batteries but uh, nickel and cobalt and aluminum are used from there the smelting and refining happens and then they prepare the precursors for nca which is the chemistry used in tesla model s but like, what are those precursors they are nickel sulfate cobalt sulfate sodium hydroxide and from the mining mines of chile or bolivia or some other places around the world they get secure lithium which comes out as lithium carbonate and then from that they get lithium hydroxide so lithium hydroxide on the one side nickel cobalt and sodium and aluminum on the other side you have you get all this precursor they go through a whole bunch of metallurgical processes refining smelting purification and then finally you know you combine them in the right kind of proportion to get nca which gives you the you know if you mix them in the wrong proportion you lose the capacity so it's done in the right proportion right process conditions and finally you get nca which is ends up in your nca battery so the whole cycle life you know takes many many months and even if you were to have the mines right next to the gigafactory do all these things it will still be a month worth of work and it takes you know your it's, it's a lot of work so that is just for the nca which is the cathode similarly the anode part which is the graphite you know you have to have a graphite mine and then the petroleum refinery supplies you with the additives and co pitch black and uh, conductive additives so you get natural graphite from the mines and then it goes into this process where they combine the additives and binders finally you carbonize them and then it's uh, there's something called graphitization at very high temperatures and then finally you you know milling is a sh process where they break down you know it breaks down the big chunks into small pieces and then finally you blend them and then finally you get the graphite anode this is a really birds overview of the whole process because there are so many details into this so much energy effort work that goes into this but this gives you an idea of how much work it takes just to get the anode and the cathode right i've got a question for you about um one of the pieces there um top left when it says that the, the, the there's the refinery involved in the oil the petroleum uh -huh. that's that's to process the those pieces of the the thing or can you explain that a little bit more sure so gasoline production involves a lot of byproducts that is used in our hair products in, in oil lotions plastic so many other you know components so that is all the byproduct of petroleum uh, refining so gasoline is one and then kerosene jet fuel and a whole bunch of other byproducts come out and uh, uh, pitch black and then uh, coke uh, so these are all coke and they're, they're, they're all part of byproducts of the petroleum refining and they're used in small quantities basically you want to bind the particles of graphite in a proper way and shape them because uh, uh that's that's the, that that's the product so they use uh refining pitch black and additives to bind the small products small graphite particles together but they're not the majority here graphite is still the majority but we do have to use uh, small amounts of binders and additives from the petroleum industry so how do we get 18650s you know that's a that's another 
important piece of information, right? You know, it's good to know how 18650s come about. And there's so much work that goes behind making a sing single cell of 18650. You know, in the previous slide, we talked about mining and Kurt Kelty mentioned about refining hydrometallurgical processes, pyrometallurgical processes. And from there, you know, you get the refined powder. That powder is the starting points for 18650. You know, the graphite powder, the NCA powder, you get the powder in really high quality. They, they are very high quality powders, right? And then you mix them in the right chemistry, stoichiometry, with the binder, with the additives, conductive additives, and then you disperse it. And that then you then you this is where the Tesla's acquisition of Mac, Maxwell Technologies could play an important role. These two steps. First one, slurry making, and then the coating and drying. In the first step, you use the powders, cathode and anode, and then make a slurry out of it uh, using a solvent. It's a, it's a laborious process. It is a labor intensive process. It is a equipment intensive process. And then you make the slurry, you coat it on a current collector, like you know, for uh, anode, you put it on copper, for cathode, you put it on aluminum. Then you have large rolls. The, these rolls run for miles. And then you have to dry it. You coat it and dry it, OK? These two steps are very labor intensive. And then there's something called calendaring. Once you cal calendaring is basically compaction of the electrode material on the current collector to get the highest energy density and the, the shortest conductive path for the lithiums to flow through. Basically, you want them. You want to make the lithiums, uh, lithiums pathway as simple and you know easy as possible, so they don't have to uh, tackle a lot of obstacles in the cathode structure. And then once you do that, you have to make sure the calendar ca cathode is uh, of certain quality, so you characterize the. Uh, cathode material and anode material to make sure there are no large pores, the compaction is right, and everything is OK. And then you cut it and punch it to the exact size you want for the 18650s. And then once you cut it, you assemble it into a jelly roll that we saw in the previous slides. You have a jelly roll in a cylindrical format. And then you include, you add electrolyte into that in this stage. And then you have the formation. You initiate the cell for a certain voltage, and then you test it. Make sure it runs for, you know, out of 100 cells, in a batch of 100 cells, you take a few of them out. Make sure you, it gives you the right voltage, right current, you have power density, energy density, and then you ship the, the whole batch. So this is the flow, process flow chart. As you can see, it is a very labor intensive process. I'll give you a brief overview of, uh, the first two stages, right? The slurry preparation and the coating and drying. This is where the text, uh, the Maxwell technology could make a difference because in slurry preparation, you need large quantities of solvent. You have to mix it. If you need large equipments, it is time consuming. And time is money in an in, in a industry that has to churn out gigawatts of energy every year. You know, if you remember, uh, the Giga factory is right now limited by Panasonic's ability to produce. Uh, they wanted 35 gigawatts hour, but they are able to do only 25 gigawatt hour. So time is money in such situations. And if you have to do slurry preparation, coating and drying, the coating and drying itself takes like 18 hours. And 18 hours is a lot of money, right? If you can combine them into one process, you save a lot of steps, equipment cost, cost material cost, and then the time itself. Uh, so, and then it goes to calendaring. So the coating and drying and calendaring. So this is where the Tesla, sorry, the Maxwell's dry electro technology could make a difference. And I'm sure that is one of the reasons Tesla acquired them. So after calendaring, cutting it, cell assembly, and then, you know, it goes to the electrolyte filling and formation. Up, up.